Hello, my friends. How are you today? I am coming to you on stream live. Um, sorry, um, on StreamYard. And we are playing with something new. We are playing with a new workstation over here on my uh, camera. So we're going to play around with that today. We're going to see if this is going to work. And just turning down the volume there. And we're going to see if this uh, second camera source is going to work today. It's always a challenge and it's always an experiment to see um, if I can master this technology that I need to come to you live. So um, go ahead and leave me a comment if you're here so I know that you're all here. And we are today going to be making these beautiful roses. This is something that I have just um, started experimenting with. This is the very first rose I have made. So we're going to continue to experiment today. I want to show you how I made this rose. And we're going to play around with some different ideas for the leaves using leaves galore. So I did want to share this with you today. I made a long stem rose and I'm planning on making a dozen roses for a gift for someone. So um, I just wanted to bring you this idea today as a new way to use some of the beautiful fabric that you have in your stash. And uh, there's some, a bunch of supplies that you're gonna need. So I know that we are just playing today and I wanted to just show you how I experimented and made this rose. And then from there, if you wanna make your own roses, I'm going to put together a list of supplies for you. So, hey, Tina. Good morning, Elizabeth. Hi, Patty. So cool. Nice to see all of you here. Thank you for letting me know you're here. Uh, yeah, this rose is just so beautiful. I'm going to bring it up close to the camera because you can see in that camera the variety of colors in this beautiful Sobatique um, gradations fabric. So I want to show you how I made the rose using the Sobatique gradations. And let me just play with my camera for a second and see if I can get this to, uh, right now, it is, um, I can hear the sound coming out of the phone and I shouldn't because it is put on mute, but for some reason I'm still hearing the sound coming out of the phone. So let me just play around with that and we're gonna show you over here on my workstation, um, the different uh, supplies you're going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and bring my workstation as the main event here. Let's see if I can do that. Ah, oh, let's see, we're going to remove this one. And then we're going to add this one and we're going to remove this. And let's see if we can do it side by side. Yeah, the problem is that the phone, because it um, it, it films horizont uh, vertically instead of horizontally, so I guess that's the biggest we're going to be able to get that workstation. So let's try this. We're going to, yeah, I think that's the best we can do. All right, so hi, Leslie. Hi, v Valeria. Oh, so nice to see you today. You don't hear the sound from the phone, so it's not an issue. Thank you so much, Facebook user. I don't know who that was, um, but the picture is very clear. That's great. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is show you all of the supplies that we need. Hi, Betty. Nice to see you. That rose does look real, Patty, doesn't it? And that's what I love about this. And I'm so excited to play around with this technique, and I think we're going to perfect it. We're going to get it even better than the very first one that I made. So I'm excited to show you this process, but let's talk about the supplies first. The first thing that we're gonna need is some rose leaves. Now I went on Amazon and I bought this entire huge bag of rose leaves. And when you pull those out, boy, they just um, ended up everywhere. But when you pull those out, there's some really beautiful rose leaves that have uh, plastic stems and there's a hole in the middle of that plastic stem. So that's easy to go on the, um, the wire that you're using for your long stem rows. So that was a real easy way to do it. But I wanna show you, or I wanna experiment with you because what we're doing here, 
when you come to my studio on Monday mornings, what we're doing is we're playing together. I don't have all the answers. I don't have a, um, a pattern for this. I don't have it all worked out. When we get together on Mondays, it's my time to play. So you get to look over my shoulder and you get to play with these ideas with me, even though they are not perfected yet. So I don't want you to come here on Mondays and expect to have a supply list and everything you need to get started. That's not what it's all about. We're discovering together. And then from there, I will talk to you about the supplies you need. You're going to learn right along with me. You might even have some hints and some techniques that I don't have. Maybe some of you were flower arrangers or worked in a flower shop or you have worked with silk flowers before. You're going to have ideas that I know nothing about because I'm a quilter. But I found um, I had this idea in my head because of the so Sobatique gradations being so beautiful. I knew I could make ribbon roses because I used to make those when I was a kid. So I decided to make fabric roses instead. So what I'm showing you today is my process of discovery. And we're going to discover how to make these roses together. I don't have it all figured out. I don't have a master plan. We're just going to play. So you're going to get yourself some of these rose petals or you could go ahead and grab a silk rose from the flower uh, from like um, AC Moore, Mace, um, uh, Joanne Fabrics, and just pop the top off the head of the flower and replace it with this um, fabric flower that we're going to make. So that would save you a whole lot of time and effort to wrap this stem and put the rose petals on it. Now, mine is a little bit messy because of the way I wrap the stem, but you know what? I don't think it matters at all because what you're focusing in on is the head of this beautiful rose. And um, so I'm not really that concerned about the way I've wrapped it up top here, which looks rather messy when you get it up, up close and it's very heavy until you get right down to here. But you know what? On a rose bush, you do have a thickening of the stem and, a, and the calyx that holds the uh, flower. So I don't mind that heavy look and it's kind of hidden behind the flower anyway. So you can get yourself some of these silk uh, leaves or instead we're gonna make fabric leaves today. So let's get started with the fabric leaves. Once we have the leaves made, then we can experiment with how to add those to our rows. All right, Colleen, good to see you. Anita, thanks for coming in from New York. Terrific. All right, so um, normally I have a bag full of bits and pieces, leaves um, in all different colors. And this is what I've, um, hi B, nice to see you. Oh, yay, You're, I'm so happy that you have gotten a clean bill of health. B, I am so grateful and I've been praying for you and thinking of you. And I'm so happy that you're here with us. Terrific. Oh, my goodness. That makes me so happy, B. Love, love, love seeing you back to your, um, to your best health. So, okay. So we're going to grab this bag full of goodies and we're going to look for our uh, four-inch leaves. But this is a messy four-inch leaf. I don't know where this came from. Um, I think I'm just going to cut some brand new four-inch leaves. So I'm gonna work over here on my workstation, which you're gonna see on that second camera. So when I have some fabric and it's all messy like this, and I'm actually gonna turn my camera, you're gonna see the backside of me, unfortunately, but at least you get to see what I'm doing here at my workstation. And if I turn around, I can talk to you. I'm gonna take the tip of my iron because I've just grabbed this fabric out of my, um, my extra fabric bin. And it's all wrinkled and crinkled. So how do you deal with a piece of fabric like that with fusible on it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tip of my iron and I'm just going to press this to my applique pressing sheet. And I'm only going to press the tips here and there just to get rid of those big folds. Just um, tacking this down to the pressing sheet with the tip of my iron. What I don't want to do is put my iron right down on this fabric because there is fusible sticking out the edge. So when I put the fusible on the fabric, it was a little bit bigger than the fabric. So I've got fusible residue over here. And what I'm not gonna do now is I've straightened this out the best I can. Now I'm gonna cover it over with the applique pressing sheet and give it a nice quick press. I don't really want to get it too, too hot because then I've got to let it cool down again. 
but there, that straightened out all those messy edges. And I've got a second piece of fabric here. You can see that I'm using the leftover fabric from previous projects. And this is a great place to use those leftover fabrics from previous projects. So this one doesn't have any fusible sticking out the edges because it's a nice cut edge. So I'm just ironing this one with my iron and that's all good, well and good. All right, so now that I have my fabrics all fused and ready to go, I want those to cool for a few minutes. So I'm gonna show you some of the other supplies that I'm going to use. The first thing I'm gonna use is some gorgeous fabric from the Sew Boutique Gradations. When you open up this fabric, and these are one yard cuts, you can get these from Sew Boutique. I love Sew Boutique because they are a great company, super, super nice people. And um, they make these beautiful uh, gradation fabrics. I think they're made in Bali, but I'm not really sure. But they are hand dyed boutiques and um, Sobati goes over to that country, has these made and then imports them. So it's a wonderful way to support this small cottage industry as well as um, Sobati, which is a domestic company. So these fabrics change from one color to the other along the course of the one yard wide fabric. So it's gonna change from this light uh, salmon color and then it gets a little bit darker and a little bit darker and a little bit darker all the way to the darkest color over here. So when they're folded up this way, you see the lightest color and you see the darkest color and it changes color in between. So this is a great type of fabric to use for this particular project. So I've got some of that fabric right here and I've already cut it down into a six inch width. So I'm gonna do that all the way across that yard of fabric. So from a yard of fabric, you can make a half dozen roses. A yard of fabric is 36 inches. We're gonna cut it into six inch wide pieces. So we're gonna end up with six six inch wide strips. So that's a half dozen roses right there. We're gonna use one strip for each of our roses. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab some nice heavy gauge wire. I forget what I ended up buying from Amazon. It might've been 24 gauge or 22 gauge wire, but this one is a wrapped wire. It's already wrapped with the floral tape, so it's not just the plain wire. And all I did was I took those wires and they came in a big, huge bundle like this. So I took one of these wires and I just wrapped it around my finger this way to make a little loop right here on the wire. So let me do that again. So here, I just wrap this right around my finger, pinched it to make a little loop on the wire. That's gonna help me get started with that ribbon rose. Now the other supplies that you're going to need are some floral tape. And I'm gonna use my Leaves Galore grand tool and instead of using the preformed roses rose petals i'm sorry rose leaves i'm going to go ahead and use the grand tool to make some uh, nice big leaves or you know what maybe i should use the norm that's about the same size as the leaves that are there so yep let's go ahead and use the norm template instead so i want to make sure my wire is all put aside before I start cutting with my Leaves Galore tools, just like when you're on your cutting station. You never want to have any pins on your cutting station. You've also got to make sure that there's none of these wires on your cutting station. So one more um, bit of supplies, you're going to need to get yourself some wire cutting pliers. So I've got all my old pliers here. I think these are the best wire cutters I have. I'm gonna try using those or maybe these. So let me take these two pliers out of the case and keep those here. Now, I also have some wired ribbon. Now, I like uh, using wired ribbon or you could use a nice thin wire. And the thinnest wire I had was this one right here. It's a big mess, but this is the thinnest wire I had. 
And that certainly could be used for your leaves as well. So what I'm gonna do with this wire is I'm gonna take maybe a, let's say a 10 inch or 12 inch section and I'm gonna fold it in half and then I'm gonna cut that 12 inch section of wire, but just like that. And I'm gonna need one of those for each of the leaves. And I'm gonna be making um, three leaves for each, uh, three leaves for each cluster. And I need four clusters on this rose. So that's quite a bit of work to do the leaves individually. But I wanted to give you the chance to make your leaves with leaves galore instead of buying your leaves like I did from Amazon. But you know, if you uh, use the silk flower and just pull the head off the silk flower, then you've already got your leaves. But I wanted to just give you some different methods for making those leaves. So I've made three different wires here that are go gonna go into my leaves. I could also use a wired ribbon. Now, the thing I like about the wired ribbon and I'm gonna use my scissors, but not my best scissors because there is wire in there. I'm gonna just snip some sections of that ribbon. I don't mind using the wired ribbon for this, but I'm not sure how well it's gonna hold up if it's really stiff enough, but I'm gonna cut three sections of ribbon so that we can play with that method too. And together we're gonna discover the best method. So as I said before, I don't necessarily have the best method yet, that's what we're doing today. So we're gonna discover the best method for making these roses. All right, so I've got wired ribbon, I've got my wire, but these I wanna make sure they're far away from my cutting station when I cut with my Leaves Galore tools. So I'm gonna take all of my wire and some of my supplies and move them out of the way to make sure that I don't cut near them when I'm cutting with my Leaves Galore tool. So I'm gonna take that fabric that I got ready and I'd like to have two or three different fabrics and I'm just gonna cut a length of fabric. Let's see, I do need my rotary cutter, which is not where it's supposed to be. Oh, there it is, okay. I need a length of fabric and I like to cut about 12 and a half inches when I'm using the Leaves Galore Norm tool. So I'm just gonna cut a few pieces of fabric here at approximately 12 and a half or so. And then I'm gonna layer the fabrics three layers at a time. And you've all seen me do this over and over before, but I just place the tool on the fabric. Let's pull this one down so all the bottom edges are fairly close to matching. And I wanna cut some of my three inch leaves. Now I might try some four inch leaves. I might try the three inch leaves. It's really um, personal preference and we're gonna see what those look like. So I might do a little bit of both. So to cut your leaves, you're gonna cut once, slide up by one full leaf shape and then cut again. By the way, um, as I'm cutting leaves here, I wanna talk about Tina's class in January. So those ahead of the curve members that are on the call today, I hope you've signed up for your January workshop. Those January workshops are gonna be open to the public pretty soon. I forget the date exactly. Penny can fill me in on the date, but those are gonna open up to the public soon. So if you wanna get into Tina's workshop, I'm bringing Tina in as a guest teacher for January and she's gonna do her feathered flight class. So if you want to get into that feathered flight class, if you're an ahead of the curve member, you can pre-register and I want you to do that right away. Otherwise, when that class opens to the public, you might miss out, you might not get into that class. Now, I know that's not normally the case, but Tina's class, I think is gonna be in demand from the public because Tina has her own group of followers that might wanna take this class. So go ahead, if you're an ahead of the curve member, go ahead and pre-register for that class now that way you'll get in before we open it up to the public. All right, so we're just got these leaves cut and Tina, um, I believe that's January 20th for your class. 
So I just wanted to put a plug out there. I saw Tina on the call today. She wants to figure out how to make these ribbon roses with me too. Um, but she has just these gorgeous patterns using my tools and Deb's tu Deb Tucker's tools. And I really want to fill up her class with ahead of the curve members if possible. And then um, people from the outside can certainly take the class as well. So if you have friends that are not ahead of the curve members, go ahead and encourage them to sign up for that class if you want to do something fun together. So now we've got all of our different leaf shapes, leaf, um, sorry, all the same leaf shape, all of our different leaves cut. And I just need to grab my um, ironing station again with my applique pressing sheet on the top. So let's lay that down so that you can get a better view. So now that I have all of those leaves, I'm gonna go back to grabbing the wires that I had cut and set aside. So we're gonna try two different things today. We're gonna try the wire that I have folded. It's a lightweight wire, and I'm gonna just pinch it together here at the tip so it's not spread out. And then I'm gonna take two identical leaves and I'm gonna put those on either side of the wire. Now, the other day, I dropped my iron and it's my little Aliso, um, yeah, my little Aliso iron that I love so much that gets so, so hot. Well, I dropped it and I think I broke it. So we're gonna give it a test run right here. And we're gonna see if I can fuse these two leaves together with the wire in between. And while I let that sit, just in case, I'm gonna go grab my new iron that I purchased. I've got this brand new iron and it's a nice heavy black and decker classic iron so i'm going to take that out of the box because if my aliso iron is truly broken and it's not going to fuse those together i need to have a backup here ready to go so let's go ahead i've got that twist tie on the cord let me plug it into my power strip and then i'll have a backup just in case that Aliso iron is toast if it's done and it's not going to work. All right, there we go. So let me turn on my new classic iron. Oh, I think the Aliso is working. It feels really, really hot. Okay, good. So I've just fused those leaves on both sides of the wire and now those leaves can be formed with the wire in between. Pretty cool, right? Now I probably didn't need this whole length of wire, but um, it's nice that I have wire to work with and I can trim it off later. So let's make a couple more of those. I like the idea of the real stiff wire and that's this one right here. I don't know the gauge on that wire. I might be able to find it on the roll itself. So let's see. 24 yards, 24 gauge. Is that right? 24 gauge. Okay, so this is a thin wire. And so I'm sorry, when I said 24 gauge for the other wire, I think this is more like a eight gauge. It's a real heavy, heavy wire. So my wires are, um, excuse me, I'm not that versed in what the wires uh, numbers mean. I always go the wrong direction, just like sewing machine needles and thread, I always get confused on what weight is the heaviest. So the lower the number, the heavier the wire gauge, just the same as the red. So I'm going to put that wire between two of my fused leaves. I have to make sure those leaves are the same size. So I gotta be really careful when I cut my leaves to make sure they're all the same size. And I had two there that was slightly different. So let's go ahead and put this one in. So I think I need to spread this wire a little bit to make it lay flat and then put the other leaf over it, fold it there at the base. And then we're gonna be able to press this tip and let's see if this new iron works. Okay. I do want the wires to be pinched together here at the base. I don't want them coming out in different places out of the leaf. So even though that um, this loop here will hold on to more of the leaf 
I want them to come together here at the end so that I can uh, wrap that wire with the green floral tape if need be and keep those two together. So there I've got two leaves, let's do one more. All right, so I'm gonna do this uh, lighter color here, this lighter color batik, put that in. See how that wire loop is gonna hold on to that uh, fused fabric a little bit better. Okay, and let's give that a press. All right, so now that I have three leaves, I can arrange them as a group of three. But in order to do that, I'm first going to need to wrap that wire with the floral tape. So the floral tape is interesting. You need It's not sticky. So you need to pull it, stretch it to make it stick. So you do have to wrap it and pull it and it's hard to get it started. I don't think this is the best quality floral tape here that I bought from Amazon. Okay, there we go. We got it started, I think. So I have to pull this and stretch it as I wrap it. I am no master with floral tape, but that's the whole idea is you pull it and stretch it as you wrap it. Then we're gonna add in another leaf here, okay? So once again, I'm gonna pull and stretch and I'm gonna add my third one at the same time. Pull and stretch that tape to cover up those wires and continue on down. So the fabric leaves are gonna be a little bit more work, but what a wonderful way to use all those extra leaves that you've been collecting from all of your Leaves Galore projects, when you have those leftover leaves, it's really nice to be able to use those. So I love the fact that we can use these leaves and we can arrange them because of the wires so that they look really pretty and really natural. And I think that just adds to the effect of the fabric rose when you have fabric leaves to go with it. Doesn't that look beautiful rather than the silk or plastic leaves? So it really does add something to the floral arrangement, um, but you have to realize that these leaves are gonna fray a little bit, okay? So um, they are beautiful, but I'm gonna give you an alternative to doing the three inch leaves where they fray. So let's pull this aside. Once again, we're discovering together, aren't we? So the fraying isn't something that I really was thinking about. What I'd like to show you is how I'm going to do a four inch leaf. Let's go ahead and do, well, we could do it with hearts and more, or we could do it with the four inch leaf, but let's go ahead and use a four inch leaf. And I wanna cut a four inch leaf shape here. And let's see if we can, have an alternative to that frayed edge. I've been thinking about this idea, but I haven't tried it, so I'm happy to be here with you to try this. The other thing I'm gonna do is I wanna try using, I wanna try using this um, ribbon instead of the wire and see if it's heavy enough. I have my suspicion that this wire is not really going to be stiff enough to use. The reason why I wanted to, choose, to try the ribbon, and obviously I would use green ribbon and not this purple ribbon, but the reason why I wanted to try the, perp, the wire ribbon, I know that wire is so thin in there that I can actually sew right through this ribbon. So if I had chosen green, wired ribbon, which I didn't have any on hand, um, I can put that wire ribbon right through the leaf and I can sew right up along that ribbon. Sorry, that was really hot. Let me let that cool for a second. 
I can sew right here along the ribbon and make some little um, sewing lines coming out from the center to give that leaf some dimension. Now, the other thing I would be able to do is I can take my pinking shears and I'm going to be able to pink the edges of that leaf once it's fused together. Now, I love using pinking shears on the leaves. Gives it that nice serrated edge. And I'm just running the pinking shears right up along the edge. I'm hardly taking off anything except these little V's. So I'm really running the pinking shears right up along the edge of the leaf. Now that might not might look a little craftsy, but I wanted to try it. Rather than just having the straight edge leaves, now we have these nice pinked edge leaves. So I'm going to put that down here on this camera so you can see that a little bit better. So we have a little pinked edge on the leaves, and I think that's awfully pretty. But this wire isn't quite heavy enough. I like this one so much better because the leaves aren't floppy like this one right here. So definitely the wire is a better choice. If I use the wired ribbon, I'd probably want to fold it in half and use a little, um, use two layers of the wire ribbon and that's gonna give it a little bit more stiffness. But that wire ribbon to me is just, just too thin. But I like the idea of the wired ribbon because you'd be able to sew over it. And once you do a bunch of sewing over there, basically quilting into that leaf, it's gonna add a little bit of stiffness as well. But I would say that this was not the best choice that this wire is a much better choice. Unfortunately, I can't sew over this because the wire is too heavy and it would break my needle. But I think it's awfully pretty just like this. Now you could pink these edges, but I do think that this is a little craftsy looking. It's not as pretty as the smooth edge. Although when you look at these leaves right here, they do have a small pinked edge. So it's definitely an option and it's something that you can decide for yourself which way you'd like to do your leaves. So let's bring our leaves right here. I'd like to make another one of these, but I'm not gonna take the time to do that right now. I wanna move forward and show you how I made the rows. So the rows is made from six inches of the Sobatique fabric. And when I cut the Sobatique fabric from edge to edge, let's get the six inch piece right here, okay. When I cut the Sobatique fabric from edge to edge, it starts with the light pink and it goes to the dark pink. So I'm gonna take that fabric and I'm gonna fold it in half this way. So you've got now three inch wide. So if you go on YouTube, you can find the instructions for a ribbon rose. And that's how I made this rose. I found the instructions for a ribbon rose and I treated the fabric just like ribbon. So I'm probably not going to be very good at demonstrating this method because this is only the second one I've made in the last number of years. When I was a kid, I used to make these ribbon roses. So I kind of kind of came back to me. But if you want a really good demonstration of how to make that ribbon rose, go ahead and look on YouTube and then adapt it for fabric just like I did. So this is basically like a big wide ribbon. But remember, we don't have finished edges on this fabric. So that's one of the things that we're compromising on is that we don't have a, a finished edge on the ribbon. So there are times when you have raw edges showing on your flower. And to me, that was okay, because what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna make a gift of a dozen roses and that is two yards of fabric that I'm giving to my friend who's a quilter. So I love the idea of making a gift, um, but at the same time, uh, I'm sending flowers, I'm sorry. I like the idea of sending flowers, but at the same time, it's a gift for a quilter because it is fabric that they can take apart and they can use. So I'm, the first step in making the ribbon rose is to fold this edge down like this. 
and then we're gonna fold it down one more time. So you're making this little triangle point here that you're gonna be able to hold on to as you wrap the center of your flower. So that's what I did is I pulled it down on a diagonal, 45 degree diagonal here, and then I'm gonna pull it down again. Now you'll notice that on this flower, I'm starting with the darker color here on my right. On this flower, I started with the lighter color. Whatever you start with and fold down twice is gonna end up in the center of your flower. So I'm gonna do the reverse. I wanna see what this flower looks like with the dark in the center and the lighter petals as you go out. Now this part is the part that I find a little bit difficult to get started. And I'm going to go ahead and grab some of that wire and I'm gonna grab my floral tape. As you saw, I'm not very good at wrapping with the floral tape. So I'm hoping that if I use the wire, I can get the rose secured a little bit more easily um, to the long wire that I'm gonna use for the stem. So what I didn't do the last time when I first made my rose is I didn't pin this in place. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave that pin right in place and then that way I have something to hold on to as I wrap my rose um, and it hangs on to this little circle that I've made in the wire. Now I didn't do this the first time. I put the wire in later, but I wanna try this method right here with you so that we can play around with this together. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold this tip down and then we're gonna wrap once around, okay? And we're gonna keep folding this fabric down as we, as we wrap around. So I'm gonna fold down at an angle and wrap around, making each little petal. So we're folding down folding down and wrapping around. Oh, of course, my first one came out prettier than this one. So I, I need to go back and watch that YouTube video again, just to make sure I'm doing this right. We're gonna fold down and we're gonna wrap around. And then we keep folding and wrapping, making those petals a little bit larger every time. I'm doing a terrible job this time. I need to go back and watch that video. But that is the concept of wrapping your rows. You're starting with this little tail right here, this little tail, and I'm gonna try doing it without that, um, the wire in it, because I had a much better time doing that the last time. So we're folding down and wrapping around. Okay, and then we're folding down and wrapping around. That's much better. And then we're folding down and wrapping around. Okay, so you get the idea. I wish I were doing a better job at this. I did a much better job the other night while I was sitting watching television I watched the YouTube video and then I just did this and it came out much nicer. But that's looking much better right there. Now this one is uh, the center needs to be pulled down a little bit. And there you go, there's the start of our rows. So I'm gonna fold down and wrap around. I'm gonna fold down and wrap around. Now, every time you're wrapping, I'm really just holding on underneath, I'm holding on to that point that we created initially. I'm not holding on to the fabric that I'm wrapping. That's just wrapping around this point. I'm doing it, I'm folding it, I'm, I'm holding it a little bit because I want to kind of form these rose petals as I go 
but I'm not um, really holding on to that fabric. That fabric is just wrapping around this base. Okay, so that's what's giving you your rows. Now that we have this part sticking out, that's where I wiggled this stem right down into the center. And then I was able to wrap this portion with the floral tape. Okay, it was hard to get it started. And that's why I just pulled and wrapped this way and made a nice tight ball right here. And then I started wrapping it the proper way where you stretch and wrap the floral, floral tape. So let me show you that here. So here, the ending piece, I pulled down together with that, uh, that middle piece. And then I wrapped it just very uh, tightly with that floral tape. And then I made a nice big calyx here to hold that rose. And then I wrap, wrapped it the proper way. Now, as you're coming down and you're wrapping with that ribbon and first, like I said, I just wrapped it just around and around without doing it the right way. But once I got that top secured, then I would start holding this and twisting it and pulling that floral tape because you have to stretch the floral tape in order for it to stick to itself. After you get to a certain point, then you're going to take your leaves that you just made, and I've lost the leaves that we've just made. Let me go ahead and find those. We're gonna grab the leaves that we've just made and we're gonna wrap those two together. Once again, you can wrap it um, just without paying attention to the direction of the floral tape. Just wrap it around this way a few times. And then once you have it secured, then you're gonna start wrapping the floral tape the way it was made to be used. So you're gonna twist and stretch, twist and stretch, twist and stretch, all the way down to bring those two wires together. So I'm disappointed that I didn't get my, fl my flower all done. And so I'm gonna take this all apart and I'm gonna continue working on that. Now I'm gonna watch that video one more time and I'm gonna make sure that I'm folding this the right way. I do like the beginnings of this rose, but I want to uh, do the entire thing. Now, when I sat in front of the television and made this rose, it took me about 15 or 20 minutes to make this one right here. So it's not difficult to make. It just takes a little bit of patience in order to fold this rose and make it pretty. Now, um, when you're folding, at this point, when you're folding and then wrapping that petal around, when you're folding, you're gonna alternate between your raw edges and your folded edge. So there are times when you're gonna end up with a raw edge on the outside of your petal right here. Now, I'm not worried about that. I'm not too concerned. This fabric is meant to be used. This is not a flower that I think is gonna hang around for 10 years and will eventually fray over there. But even here where you see that raw edge exposed, it is fraying a little bit, but it's only a short one inch section. So I don't think it's that objectionable to use the raw edges, but that's the whole nature of this folding technique. You're gonna fold and then you're gonna fold again, which is gonna put the, the um, folded edge on the top. So you're folding once and then wrapping. And as you fold again, it turns down this edge. So that's what makes those pretty petals. Now, I'm no expert at this. It is going to take me some time to master this technique. Um, but I do think that that rose is just absolutely beautiful. 
and I continue all the way down to the nice light end, I will post a picture later of the finished rows because I want to show you the dark center rows with the light edges as opposed to the light center rows with the dark edges. All right, so I should have practiced one more time before I ventured to show you how to do this, but it was really kind of fun last night when I made my rows and I had that on my mind when I was thinking, what can I do for you here on um, StreamYard that's different from the things that I've normally done? All right, it is pretty Betty, isn't it? So let me look at your comments here and your questions and see if we can uh, figure this out together. All right, so I'm gonna go back to YouTube. I will link below um, in the comments. I will link to the YouTube video that I used for making the ribbon roses. And I will make sure that you have that link so that you can practice with me. And I need to make a dozen of these today. Oops, everything just unrolled when I pulled it. That's okay. I need to make a dozen of these today to go to somebody very special for a birthday that's coming up. So um, I'm gonna practice, practice, practice. And I think it's a beautiful technique. What a wonderful gift that would be fabulous for any um, quilter on your list. And uh, who wouldn't love getting a dozen roses in um, uh, mailed to them during this COVID crisis? It would be such a wonderful gift to receive. And I don't know about you, but it is difficult for me to see fresh flowers that somebody spent so much money on that just, um, turn my iron off here, that just die after a couple of weeks. And especially in this winter time, if, if the delivery service leaves them anywhere outside for any amount of time, they just die so quickly. So I think that this is even a more beautiful and more thoughtful gift than sending a dozen roses to someone. So I hope that you will play along with me, practice this technique, learn how to make your own, um, I was going to say ribbon roses, but we're going to use fabric roses. And I think it's just a fabulous gift. Now you'll notice that I use the Sobatik gradations. I have a course called gradations. It was based on the Sobatik fabric. And I happen to have, um, gosh, four bolts of their fabric that I'm going to make into kits for gradations. So later on this year, we're going to tackle gradations again, if you haven't done gradations with me. In January, we're going to do My Magical Garden, and that's on the side of me over here that you can't see, but I'm going to just put the camera over there a little bit more so you can see me and uh, My Magical Garden. So My Magical Garden, we're going to start on January 15th. That is a pre-recorded course, so I will be following along with members as they start this new course people that already have My Magical Garden, go ahead and let's get started again. If you pick up where you left off, if you have started already, join in, show us pictures of what you've got going. And we're gonna start that in January. So January will be fabric preparation month and getting all of your fabrics ready. Probably February 1st, maybe we'll, um, we'll, we'll figure that schedule out, but we'll start the actual, um, watching the videos on your own time, making the blocks in your own time, and then at the end of each month, having a little reveal to see how you made out with your blocks, maybe mid-month having a little Q&A session just in case you had any trouble with the instructions or any questions about the instructions. So we're going to start that on January 15th. And um, in the meantime, we are uh, finishing up the um, changes to the membership. We're going to have the three levels of membership available on, gosh, when did I say? I'm going to look at the banner that I made because I did show, uh, yeah, there we go. December 12th, we'll have the three membership levels available. So the new membership, uh, the new versions of the membership 
are going to be live on the 12th. So uh, Donna is working so hard behind the scenes, getting the technology straightened out so we can start to offer three different levels of membership. And I am gonna spend the rest of my day not only making my roses, but completing the uh, video instructions for the Silver Leaf membership. The Silver Leaf membership will be um, at $29 a month. What you're going to get in the Silver Leaf membership is the basic course, how to use the Leaves Galore tools. And you can stick around for as long as you need to to use your Leaves Galore tools. Then we're going to move into the Hearts and More tools. Uh, we might even do some things with rings and things eventually, but the idea is it's just instruction with no projects so that you can learn all the different techniques for using the tools without having to finish projects. The second membership level is what you're all used to or what you've all seen before. At the $49 level, you're going to have access to eight different um, pre-recorded uh, courses and still have two courses a month that you can take live. Uh, you're also going to get the step-by-step -step instructions that the Silver Leaf membership is getting. So that's the Gold Leaf membership. Now, my current members, you're all going to be grandfathered and moved up to the platinum membership level. And at the platinum membership level, the $69 level, you're going to have access to all of the workshops, everything that we have so far on video, by the way, not everything, um, because I don't have them all edited and ready yet, but we'll be adding new courses all the time at the platinum level. And um, you're, you'll have everything. You'll have access to the step-by-step -step instructions that the Silver and Gold Leaf gets. You'll have access to all of the workshop videos and the two live workshops every month. Um, everybody gets the discount on purchases from the website. Everybody gets access to the Facebook group, the private Facebook group, not this free one, but the private one, where we have Q&A sessions every month. So there's lots of things happening. There's lots of things going on behind the scenes. So if I've been a little bit quiet lately, it's because I've been doing so much uh, background work to boost up the membership and make it even better for our members. So this afternoon at three o'clock, we have from three to five, we have our mug rug pin, um, our pin quilt workshop or the mug rug workshop. And so feel free to, to um, Oh, you know what? You would have needed to sign up for that already because we got to send you a Zoom invitation for that. So I'm looking forward to that. But we offer that free workshop every month. And that's just a great way to practice your basic leaf shapes and to learn how to do the basic orange peel quilt style. That's my little free workshop that gets people started using their tools and um, gets you onto Zoom so that you have the opportunity to try a Zoom workshop to see if the membership is right for you where we have the Zoom workshops. But the membership is going to be less and less dependent on the Zoom workshops, and it's going to have more and more pre-recorded content that's right there in the member area for you to access. So that's what's been going on here. In addition to that, I've been working on rings and things. The rings and things tools are shipping today from our Worcester warehouse. So Joanne is packaging and shipping those rings and things tools. Oh, I did get my rings and things tools from Joanne. I went over and saw her uh, Friday last week when they came in late Friday. And I grabbed my rings and things tools. And the reason why I grabbed my rings and things tools from Joanne is because I've been writing the instruction sheets, which I've been waiting for the actual tools to take the photographs for the instruction sheets because my original rings and things prototypes were the wrong color. They were yellow instead of orange. So I didn't want to take all the photographs for the rings and things instructions with the wrong color tools. So let me stop that ticker. I find it very annoying there. Let's get rid of that one. And um, I'm going to put myself back on a uh, single here. But we're gonna do that. We're gonna remove this one. Good. All right, so um, the rings and things are on their way to those of you who pre-ordered. Uh, I'm gonna finish up and add the instruction sheet to a email and you're going to get your instruction sheet and the Big Daddy clamshell pattern 
in the mail before you get your tools. So as soon as you have your tools, you'll have the Big Daddy clamshell pattern and you'll have the rings and things instructions. Now that's just to those people who ordered before today. So um, pre-orders of the rings and things tools is done. If you didn't get in on the pre-order, that's okay. You can still get the tools, but you won't get the bonus of the free pattern. So I wanna thank all of you who are patiently waiting for your rings and things, that little bonus, that free pattern is going out to all of you. So you'll have it in time for your rings and things tools to come in this week. Well, I think that is everything that I had for today. I've been with you for almost an hour here. So I did want to um, just thank you for coming. It's so nice to see all of you. Ah, uh, rings and things. Good, good, good. Um, you can't wait to play. Yay, Patty. Uh, you were just asking about them. Good, good, good. Um, all right. Uh, make a dozen roses to match Belle en Rouge. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Um, giving a gift that keeps on giving, Colleen. I love that because, um, of course, we all have quilters in our life that we love and we would love to send them a, a special gift especially at this time when we're all alone and not able to get together for special occasions i think the roses are going to be a pretty special little thing to send to someone special hey cinzia so nice to see you i'm glad you're here sandra good to see you so um i have a lot of my members here i want to make sure that my members are enjoying their workshops and even if you can't take the live workshops keep signing up for workshops so that you get the recorded version but realize that we are adding the recordings to your um, the new membership levels. So all of our current members, um, all of our current members, you're getting boosted up until that platinum membership level. So you will have all of those videos instead of having them in your emails and having to find those emails for the videos. Now you're going to have them in your membership levels. So we're just putting the finishing touches on those. So as of January 1st, or even before, but as of January 1st, for sure, you're going to have all of those videos available right in your member area. So if you haven't been able to make the workshops live with us, and I totally get that, we've got working women out there, we've got nurses and teachers and doctors and all kinds of professional women who are still going to work every day. And we want to thank you for your dedication and your um, service during this um, COVID crisis. Um, but for all of you, you have the recordings and you can watch them at any time. And that's why we're modifying the membership as people Hopefully this year we'll be getting back to some normalcy in their life and maybe not able to take the live workshops any longer. You'll still have access to all of those workshops as pre-recorded workshops. All right, um, B, B, you said that you've been making those types of roses out of clay and ceramics. Oh, very pretty. I love that. And Patty, yes. Um, acts of kindness are so important during this time. So I'm glad that you can't wait to play, Colleen, uh, with the rings and things tools and maybe with these ribbon roses. So I'm going to go ahead and save this video to Facebook. In the comments, I will put the link to the ribbon roses YouTube video. I'll study up on that YouTube video. I'm going to be practicing all day long, making my dozen roses for someone special. And then I will be posting photos of those ribbon roses before they get sent out to um, that person that's going to receive this gift from me. Yes, the membership options. I love having options, Patty, so that um, everybody gets what they need. If you don't need projects, you can join at the $29 Silver Leaf membership level. If you love the live workshops and you want access to those important workshops that teach the skills, that's going to be the middle level, the Gold Leaf membership level. If you want everything that we've ever done, if you want access to every course I teach and you want to continue 
um, expanding your skills, you want to continue learning, you want to stick with us for the long haul and keep getting new workshops as I develop those new workshops and new classes, that's the Platinum Leaf membership level. So you're welcome to join at any level. We're going to move our current members up to Platinum, but your price stays the same. You're not going to pay any more for that membership just because I'm moving you up to the Platinum level. So you're grandfathered in at the $49 level. But there's options, okay? So terrific. I'm so glad to be here with all of you today. I've taken enough of your time. I will be um, teaching this afternoon from 3 to 5. I'll be making my roses. I'll be decorating my home for the holidays this evening. And I hope that you have a lovely week. And I will see you all again next Monday. And um, those roses will be already shipped out by next Monday because I have to get them out this week. But I'll be sure to post photos here on Facebook of the dozen finished roses. All right, all. So nice to see all of you. And we will see you again soon. Take care now.